The A-10 Thunderbolt II is a single-seat, twin-turbofan, straight-wing, subsonic attack aircraft developed by Fairchild Republic for the United States Air Force, USAF. In service since 1976, it is named for the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, but is commonly referred to as the Warthog, or simply Hog. The A-10 was designed to provide close air support, CAS, to friendly ground troops by attacking armored vehicles, tanks, and other enemy ground forces. It is the only production-built aircraft designed solely for CAS to have served with the U.S. Air Force. Its secondary mission is to direct other aircraft in attacks on ground targets, a role called Forward Air Controller Airborne. Aircraft used primarily in this role are designated OA-10. The A-10 was intended to improve on the performance and firepower of the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. The Thunderbolt II's airframe was designed around the high-power 30mm GAU-8 Avenger rotary autocannon. The airframe was designed for durability, with measures such as 1,200 pounds, 540 kilograms, of titanium armor to protect the cockpit and aircraft systems, enabling it to absorb damage and continue flying. Its ability to take off and land from relatively short runways permits operation from airstrips close to the front lines, and its simple design enables maintenance with minimal facilities. It served in the Gulf War, Operation Desert Storm, the American-led intervention against Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, where the aircraft distinguished itself. The A-10 also participated in other conflicts such as in Grenada, the Balkans, Afghanistan, the Iraq War, and against the Islamic State in the Middle East. The A-10A single-seat variant was the only version produced, though one pre-production airframe was modified into the YA-10B twin-seat prototype to test an all-weather night-capable version. In 2005, a program was started to upgrade the remaining A-10A aircraft to the A-10C configuration, with modern avionics for use with precision weaponry. The U.S. Air Force had stated the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II would replace the A-10 as it entered service, but this remains highly contentious within the USAF and in political circles. With a variety of upgrades and wing replacements, the A-10's service life can be extended to 2040. The service has no planned retirement date as of June 2017. On the 10th of February, 1976, Deputy Secretary of Defense Bill Clements authorized full rate production while the first A-10 was accepted by the USAF Tactical Air Command on the 30th of March, 1976. Production continued and reached a peak rate of 13 aircraft per month. By 1984, 715 airplanes, including two prototypes and six development aircraft, had been delivered. When full-rate production was first authorized, the A-10's planned service life was 6,000 hours. A small design reinforcement was quickly adopted when initial fatigue testing failed at 80% of testing. The A-10 passed fatigue tests with the fix. Eight, zero, zero, zero flight hour service lives were becoming common at the time so fatigue testing of the A-10 continued with a new 8 hour target. This new target quickly discovered serious cracks at Wing Station 23, WS-23, where the outboard portions of the wings are joined to the fuselage. The first production change was to address this problem by adding cold working at WS-23. Soon after, the USAF found that the real-world A-10 fleet fatigue was harsher than estimated forcing a change to fatigue testing and introduced Spectrum 3 inches equivalent flight hour testing. Spectrum 3 fatigue testing started in 1979. This round of testing quickly determined that more drastic reinforcement would be needed. The second change in production, starting with aircraft number 442, was to increase the thickness of the lower skin on the outer wing panels. A tech order was issued to retrofit the thick skin to the whole fleet. But the tech order was rescinded after roughly 242 planes, leaving about 200 planes with the original thin skin. Starting with aircraft number 530, cold working at WS-0 was performed, and this retrofit was performed on earlier aircraft. A fourth, even more drastic change was initiated with aircraft number 582, again to address the problems discovered with Spectrum 3 testing. This change increased the thickness of the lower skin on the center wing panel, but it required modifications to the lower spar caps to accommodate the thicker skin. The USAF found it economically unfeasible to retrofit earlier planes with this modification. The A-10 has received many upgrades since entering service. In 1978, it received the PAVE Penny laser receiver pod, 
which receives reflected laser radiation from laser designators to allow the aircraft to deliver laser-guided munitions. The PAVE Penny Pod is carried on a pylon mounted below the right side of the cockpit and has a clear view of the ground. In 1980, the A-10 began receiving an inertial navigation system. In the early 1990s, the A-10 began to receive the Low Altitude Safety and Targeting Enhancement LASTI, upgrade, which provided computerized weapon aiming equipment, an autopilot, and a ground collision warning system. In 1999, aircraft began receiving Global Positioning System navigation systems and a multifunction display. The last TE system was upgraded with an Integrated Flight and Fire Control Computer IFFCC. Proposed further upgrades included integrated combat search and rescue locator systems, an improved early warning and anti-jam self-protection systems, and the USAF recognized that the A-10's engine power was suboptimal and had planned to replace them with more powerful engines since at least 2001 at an estimated cost of $2 billion. Hog Up and Wing Replacement Program in 1987, Grumman Aerospace took over support for the A-10 program. In 1993, Grumman updated the Damage Tolerance Assessment and Force Structural Maintenance Plan and Damage Threat Assessment. Over the next few years, problems with wing structure fatigue, first noticed in production years earlier, began to come to the fore. Implementation of the maintenance plan was greatly delayed by the Base Realignment and Closure Commission, BRAC which led to 80% of the original workforce being let go. During inspections in 1995 and 1996, cracks at the WS-23 location were found on many A-10. While many were in line with updated predictions from 1993, two of these were classified as near critical size, well beyond predictions. In August 1998, Grumman produced a new plan to address these issues and increase lifespan to 16,000 hours. This led to the Hog Up program, which commenced in 1999. Additional aspects were added to hog up over time, including new fuel bladders, flight control system changes, and engine nacelle inspections. In 2001, the cracks were reclassified as critical, which meant they were considered repairs and not upgrades, which allowed bypassing normal acquisition channels for more rapid implementation.